Should be good. And now we're on module three. 
We've talked about the Boolean data type, and we're going to talk about the simple data type and uh, something called conditionals. And conditionals are one of the more challenging things to understand uh, up till now. So just pay a little bit more attention because conditionals are uh, well, they're they're more difficult than uh, other things we've done so far. Okay. Um, and uh, I would give an example, but I'm a little sick, so I'm going to not do that. And uh, we'll just go over the slides today. So, so yeah, we saw, we saw the Boolean data type. And uh, the Boolean data type was uh, just something that could be either be true or false. And like I said, this is our way to compare uh, numbers and compare strings in Dr. Rackett. Um, we saw there are different kinds of comparisons. We saw that there was the greater than, less than, string equals, string uh, less than question mark. Uh, these were all functions that uh, returned us Boolean. And they compared. They compared different strings and they compared different numbers. We saw a quicker question. Uh, I think that most of you guys got right, so that was good. Uh, you guys kind of understand the basic idea. And um, then we talked about and, and, or, and not. Uh, and or and not are, are a way to essentially combine a bunch of booleans into one big expression. And what this meant was, well, we had, uh, well, for and, uh, we could have uh, and uh, a bunch of booleans, and if all these booleans uh, resulted in true, then our uh, and expression would result in true, and uh, if any one of those booleans uh, within the and operation resulted in false, then the entire boolean, or the entire AND operation, would result in false. And similarly for OR, uh, only one of the booleans within the OR operation needed to be true for the entire OR operation to be true. Uh, and, if, uh, if, uh, and only if uh, all of the booleans uh, within the OR operation were, were false, was the entire boolean, or was the entire OR operation false. And uh, I kind of just demonstrated this with the example of with an AND operation, if someone calls you smart, and then someone calls you ugly, you're going to be kind of insulted because you have to treat both of those things to be true, and you, you don't like one of them being true. But if someone said you're smart or you're ugly, then you could be like, okay, uh, I'm probably smart, and I'm just going to not talk about the, the ugly part. And uh, th this is an example was essentially highlighting the fact that only in, in OR, only one of the statements need to be true for the entire expression to be true, while in AND, all the statements need to be true for the AND expression to be true. Uh, and then there was also not. Not essentially, all it did was took in one boolean and uh, it turned it uh, into the other boolean. So and true was false, and and false was true. And uh, I just wanted to, uh, I, I demonstrated this uh, with some examples, and I'm just going to show you guys uh, briefly what I, what I meant with all that. So we can do and uh, false true, true, and this is going to give us false, because there's a single false in the statement, and they all need to be true for n to be true. But we can do or false, true, true, and this will give us true, because only one of them needed to be true. Now, we also talked about something called short-circuiting, and short-circuiting was the idea that both these operations, and and or, they can both stop uh, without looking at the next values, if they already found what they need. And in the AND case, if an AND ever encountered a false, it wouldn't consider what was afterwards. So for example, we could do AND false divided by 10 and 0, and this would actually just give us false. It wouldn't give us error, because it actually didn't even consider this. It didn't even go to the 10 divided by 0. It just saw a false, and it was like, hey, I saw a false. I don't care what's afterwards. I already know this entire thing is going to be false. With or, on the other hand, if we did or false and then divided by 10 to the 0, well, for or, if it encounters a false, it just keeps going. It just keeps going until it encounters a, its first true. So this would actually give us an error, because we're not allowed to divide by 0. It would encounter the first false, and it would realize, OK, I've seen a false. Let's just see what the next thing is. And then it would go to the next expression, and then it would see 10 divided by 0, and it would say, hey, that's incorrect. We can't do that. 
Now with or, we could do or true and divide 10 by zero. This on the other end, this would actually return true. And this is the same idea. With or, it keeps going until it finds the first true. And when it finds the first true, it's done. Just like with and. With and, when it finds the first false, it's done. They're kind of the opposites of each other. So in this, this would just return true. And it returns true because, well, it, it's, it's short-circuited. It found the first true, and then it didn't care about what was afterwards. It just said, oh, I found my first true, and so I'm done. Okay? And uh, this was uh, expressed in this uh, slide over here, where we saw if we see an and true followed by some expression, we go into that expression. If we see an and false followed by some expression, that just returns false. Does that make sense? It doesn't care about what's afterwards. It just, it looks at the first one. If it's false, it just stops. But if it's true, then it looks at the other ones. And, and the last one, is essentially saying that if there is no more statements, if you look at the first one, you look at the second one, you look at the third one, if, if you look at all of them, and there's no more expressions left, then the whole thing is resulting in true. We'll see an example of uh, where the last one comes in handy, or where the last one's important uh, in a few seconds. Okay, and or is actually, uh, it's the opposite of it. It's almost the opposite of, uh, of and. Uh, well, actually, okay, so before we get into or, let's actually just trace what happens uh, with an AND operation. So we have a function here called good, which consumes a string, and uh, all it does is it determines if the string length is uh, greater than or equal to 3, and on top of that, uh, it, it makes sure that the string starts with the, with the three letters cat. And uh, how do I know this? Well, I just looked at the code. The code is a, an AND of the string length greater than or equal to 3, and then it just looks at the substring from 0 to 3, and sec checks if that is equal to the string cap. So what are we doing here? We're just seeing if a string uh, of length greater than or equal to 3 is, uh, has its first three characters as cap. So when we call good that at, what happens? Well, we substitute uh, the entire good function in with, for the, with the at value, and uh, we, well, we get and uh, greater than or equal to the string length uh, of, of, of at and three. And then the next thing, what's the next thing that we evaluate here? Does y'all know? String length. Because the innermost operation right now to evaluate next is the string length. So we get string length of at, which is two. Okay? And then we see and greater than or equal to two and three. That's the, so the next thing we evaluate is the greater than or equal to operation, and the greater than or equal to operation checks if two is greater than or equal to three. And that returns what? False. So the next line, well, I mean, okay, I skipped one, but the next line is and false, followed by some expression. Now let's just take a moment, and uh, I just want to show you guys how this uh, compares to the, the, the abstract uh, representation. So we have and false, and this is just some expression, okay? So it's and false followed by some expression. Over here, and false followed by some expression returns false, okay? So that's what we have here. We have and false followed by some expression. And false followed by some expression. So therefore, and false followed by this expression, it doesn't even care, it doesn't even look at this. It just returns false. Right? Because again, I'm drilling the point home that and will stop when it encounters its first false. And the reason for this is because in an and statement, you need to look at all the statements to, to figure out whether you're true or not. But with or, you just need to find the first true statement. And when you find the first true one, you can stop. <coughs> Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, that uh, the second statement was it right? Was it was it a true statement? 
The second statement wasn't a true statement. Um, well, th so the second statement, it's actually a good question. So this is probably happening on your assignments a lot. Um, the second statement would actually result in an error. And the reason it would result in an error is because substring of at from 0 to 3 doesn't actually make sense. Because at can only go from 0 to 2. And therefore, that's, well, that's actually why we have the first check. The reason we have that check originally to see if the string length is greater than equal to 3 is for the reason that that second condition would actually result in an error if we tried to execute it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So essentially, this statement right here, substring at 0 to 3, will give us an error. So if we do, if we do substring at 0 to 3, this is probably an error you're seeing on your assignment, where it cannot go from 0 to 3, it can only go up to 2. And it, that's because, well yeah, at starts from 0 and it can go up to 1 and up to but not including the second one. There's no second index, but the whole idea is it can go, you can only pass in the value 2 here at max. Because it will, let's just try it. So we can do substring at 0 to 2. And that gives you the whole string. And if you do anything less than that or anything bigger than that, it gives you an error. And so what am I trying to say with all this? My point is, the reason that we're doing, the reason we're doing this original check to begin with is because if we didn't do this check, this would give us an error. Does that make sense? And because we do this check, this, this function will never give us an error. Because if we ever get a string that's less than length 3, which is the case here, we have a string that's less than length 3. If we pass in a string that's less than length 3, this regularly would give us an error. But because we're checking whether the string has to be greater than or equal to length 3, we're not going to get an error. And why aren't we going to get an error? Because if we get and false followed by something, this thing will not happen. It will just get false. That's actually a good question. But does that make sense? Regularly, that would give us an error if we passed in a string of less than length 3. But because we short circuit, because and false followed by some expression gives false, that expression will never happen. It will never actually execute if we if we get a if we pass in a string of less than length three. Yeah, but uh, but what happens if the first expression was a true statement? If this was true, yeah. Well, then yeah, then we would uh, then we would do this. And uh, if, if well, if this was a true state, if this was true, then this string right here would never be length two. It would, it would have to, it would, it would definitely be a string that's length 3. And if it was length 3, we would just get the first three characters and then compare. I, I think there's another example that actually has this example with the truth, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, and if it doesn't, then, uh, well, yeah, let me see, I think it does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's the next example, same thing. Okay, so we define another variable catch. And then we call uh, the good str on catch. So same, uh, same code, except now we're doing it with, uh, with a longer length string. So what happens? The first thing that happens is we pass in catch for str. And we, we get the string length of catch. Uh, and then we evaluate the string length of catch. And the string length of catch is 5. So then we get and is 5 greater than or equal to 3. That's true. So now we get and true followed by some expression. So this is, I think this is the example, or this is the case that you were talking about. So now, before we get and false followed by some expression. And that just resulted in false, because it didn't care what was next. But and true followed by some expression. Well, what happens when you have and true followed by some expression? Well, let's, let's take a look at our rules. So we have and true followed by some expression. It just goes into and that expression. So we get rid of this true, essentially. OK? So we got rid of this true, and we just go to that expression. So when we have and true followed by this expression, this true just goes away. And then we get and this expression. 
Okay? What happens next? Yellow, what happens next? Anyone? The substrate. We, we substitute STR and uh, right here, STR gets substituted uh, with catch. Okay? So now we substitute STR with catch and then we get this and then the next thing is we evaluate this. Okay? So substrate catch 0 to 3 gives us 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's up to but the, the C, but not including the C. So it's, it's uh, these three right here. Okay, so then we get and straight equals cat cat, and we get and true. Now pay attention here, because this is very important. What happens at this point? What happens when you get and true? Well, let's look at our rules. And true, followed by some expression, just turns into and expression. Okay? So, and true turns into whatever this expression is afterwards. And there is no expression afterwards. So we get and. Okay? And what's the rule for and? The rule for and is true. Okay? So once you get it down to and true, you get and and then you get true. So what happened here? And looked at the first argument, saw it was true, got rid of it. Looked at the second argument, saw it was true, got rid of it. Looked at the third argument, saw it was true, got rid of it. Eventually, it got to no arguments, and it was just like an and. And because it was no arguments, it was like, okay, true. So what does this mean? And on its own returns true, or on its own, returns false. Does that make sense? Everything, everything makes sense so far? Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, or. Or is almost the exact same, except every time we add a true, we just turn it into a false now. So, or, like I said, with or, you just need one of the statements to be true and then the entire thing is true. So with or, if you have true followed by some expression, it just returns true, and you don't care about what's afterwards. Only if you have or false followed by some expression do we get rid of the false, and do we look at that expression. That's the same thing with n. So with or, it's kind of the opposite. So notice how or true expression returns true, and back here, and true expression return and expression. So, or a true expression returns true, because we just stop. We stop at the first true. Only when we encounter a false do we go to the next expression. And then, same thing with or. Once there's nothing left to evaluate, once we've gone over all the expressions, we'll just we're going to return false. Because what happened? With or, it's like, or false followed by a bunch of expressions, you get rid of that false, you look at the next ones. Next expression, if that's false, you get rid of it, you look at the next ones. And keep doing that until you're finally left with no other expressions, and then you just return false. And if you ever find a true throughout any of that, you return true. So, hopefully there's an example. There is, perfect. So, we're going to define x as 10. Then we're going to do or equals x10, and then uh, greater than 100 divided by x compared to 5. So what's the first step? Fill it out. Substitute x equals 10. We get or equals 10 and 0. Does 10 equal 0? No. So we get or false. Or false, continuing on. And remember, with false, if this was an and, we would just return false. We would be done. But because it's an or, we're going to get rid of the false and go on to the next expression. So we get rid of the false, we go on to the next expression, and we see uh, what we get over greater than 100 divided by x uh, compared to 5. 
Now we substitute the x as, uh, as 10. We get 100 greater than 10. That gives us 10. We see 10 is greater than 5. That's true. Or true returns true. Because or goes until it finds the first true. And then when it finds the first true, it returns true. Any questions? Make sense? We good? Pretty straightforward, right? Hopefully. I, I do like to think this stuff is not too hard. Trust me, once we get to recursion, and once we get to like the complicated stuff, I'll let you know. Uh, we're, module four, we start getting into complicated stuff, and then module five, it gets really complicated. So, uh, yeah, this stuff should be like pretty straightforward. Okay, next example. Same thing, but now we define x as zero and not 10. In the previous example, x was 10, x is zero now. So, we check, uh, and, and notice what's gonna happen. We're gonna eventually have 100 divided by zero. There's gonna be an expression up there that's gonna do 100 divided by zero. So let's see if we ever get to it. First, we check if x equals, equals zero. So we substitute x as zero into the equals x zero, and we see, uh, it turns into or equals zero zero, and uh, equals zero zero returns true. So we get or true followed by whatever. And remember, if this was and, and true followed by whatever, we'd get rid of the true, and we would look at the next thing. But with or, that happens with false. If it was or false followed by something else, we would get rid of that thing and look at the next thing. But with or true, it's kind of the same as and false. It just returns true. We're done. So or true followed by something else. We don't even look at the next thing. It just returns true. So we don't even get to the 100 divided by 0 part. OK? Good so far? OK, let's see a more complicated example. So let's trace this and see what happens. Let's actually first look at it and see uh, what goes with what. So we have add this thing with this whole thing with this whole thing. So there's three parts here. There's add one, two, and three. Okay. So what's the first thing? The first thing is we compare three and five. Okay? It's true. Now, and true followed by something else, it just takes away the and and goes to the next thing. So we got rid of the, sorry, it takes away the true and goes to the next thing. We got rid of the true and went to the next thing. This is the next thing. <coughs> okay, so or, this is the next thing that gets evaluated, and this returns true. Or true followed by something else, we get rid of it. Sorry, uh, or true followed by something else just returns true. So we don't, even, we don't look at this. This whole thing just returns true. So this whole thing turned into a true. And true followed by something else. It gets rid of the true and looks at just the fault, just the next thing. And with it followed by or followed by this next thing, or one bigger than five, this return, turns to false. Okay? Or false followed by something else. Well, in the false case, we get rid of the false. And we just look at the next thing. So we just get rid of the false, look at the next thing. Or some expression, we evaluate this expression. Is 2 greater than 5? No. So this turns into false. Or false, what happens with or false? We get rid of the false, we look at the next thing. In this case, there's no next thing. So or on its own. What does or on its own return? True or false? Put your hand up if you think it's true. Put your hand up if you think it's false. So or on its own, 
returns false. And false, it just returns false. So we get false. Make sense? Does add and or make sense? Does booleans make sense? That's currently what we've done in module three. And and or, we've also done not, but not is super straightforward. And we haven't even seen an example because it's so straightforward. It just takes true, turns into false. Takes false, turns into true. There's nothing complicated about that one. These two can be a little complicated. Okay, moving on. Oh, okay, moving on to a quicker question apparently. <coughs> Okay, uh, yeah, I'll give you guys like two, two and a half minutes to solve this. Actually, I'll give you guys like four minutes to solve this because I'm going to get a drink. And this time, I'm going to turn my mic off. <laughs> I'll be back. You guys got like three minutes to solve this. Okay. Well, I'm going to reduce that. 